Hi, I'm Joe Hupsey, and I'm here with my colleague, Alok Jain. Today we're going to talk about the state of formal verification. Now, Alok and his team, they work with some of our most challenging customers. They're working on the most complex designs, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to get his input, because he's really, him and his team, you're really in the vanguard of what Cadence is doing today in formal. So, Alok, uh, welcome, and uh, maybe just introduce yourself a little bit more. Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, so, I'm the R&D lead for the incisive formal product line at Cadence. I've been at Cadence for around 16 years or so, mm -hmm. and before that, I did my PhD in the area of formal verification from Carnegie Mellon University. Terrific. Now, again, you and your organization visit a lot of customers. What's kind of a snapshot of what's going on out there? Yeah, so Joe, I think we see three broad trends out there. At the first level, what we see is a renewed, and, uh, renewed interest in the area of designer level bring up. Mm -hmm. This is where designers want to basically use some quick way of doing some sanity testing without trying to put in the effort of writing detailed test benches. So this is one area. The second big area that we see is a focus on expert level formal. Here these are experts that understand both the technology and the design and truly want to use manual and expert level techniques to verify critical blocks. And the third domain that we see is in the area of mixing simulation and formal. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, these two have been two different set of users which don't try to leverage the work from one to the other. But now with the formal metric driven solution and other solutions that we have, we are seeing a renewed focus on trying to leverage the work from one into the other domain. Interesting. Now, now when you were talking about the last uh, segment there, it seemed like you were trying to avoid the word hybrid, which I think is traditionally used to describe that space. Uh, maybe elaborate. So that is true. I am deliberately avoiding the word hybrid, Joe. The reason is I think hybrid has become obsolete. It is traditionally used to define one very specific application, one very specific way of combining simulation and formal. What we are trying to do is trying to mix simulation and formal in various different creative ways. Uh, in our view, both simulation and formal have their own strengths and weaknesses, and we are trying to find various different ways where we can leverage the strength of each to overcome the weakness of the other. Just to give you two specific examples, one, as I talked in the area of designer bring up, we, are, we have a solution called the asser assertion driven simulation solution, mm -hmm. where we are trying to use formal uh, technology to bring quick test benches for simulation users. And in the, as another example, we have the formal metric driven verification solution, where we are trying to get contributions from formal in a simulation oriented manner, so that simulation users can understand them and even mix those metrics with simulation oriented metrics coming from simulation. That's terrific. Um, so let me talk a little about uh, the EDA360 initiative. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of what EDA360 is about, or certainly a lot of what's been discussed so far is that it's you know application driven and kind of up in the embedded software space and such, but um, you know how does fit formal technology fit into this EDA360 vision? So I think one of the basic tenets of EDA360 is the availability of IP. And when you have IP, what you need is reliable, robust, and verified IP. So here, formal comes in a big way because formal can mathematically verify the IP and ensure it is completely bug-free in any, situ any, any possible situation. So what that means is that the system integrator can take this IP and be convinced that no bugs in the IP and focus on system-level ver verification. And during system level verification, he can even leverage the assertions that were put in the IP to do dynamic assertion-based verification. Makes perfect sense. Certainly uh, the feedback uh, in all these panels we've seen about IP is the, the continued stress on how unreliable IP can be. And wouldn't it be great if, if you knew you could plug it in and it would be problem-free? Obviously, formal takes care of that uh, very thoroughly. Um, one last question. Where do you see formal and we're talking about the, the mix of formal and simulation together. Where's that gonna be going in the next five years? Yeah, so I think I see two broad directions in where formal is going to go in the next five years. One area is in the domain of mixing simulation and formal users, methodology, and techniques. So I already talked about this. Today, typically, simulation and formal users are a distinct set of users that do not talk to each other. Uh, in the future, I see simulation and formal users environments getting combined so that a single user can make use of both simulation and formal techniques to solve his problem. This is one domain. On the other hand, I also think in another domain, I see a continued focus on expert level formal, where people are trying to verify critical blocks 
and there will be expert level people who understand both the design and technology that will try to continue to use expert level techniques to close on these blocks. Fascinating. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of challenges, but a lot of opportunity at the same time. That is absolutely true, Joe. Great. Well, hey, thank you for your time and uh, your insights. Thank you, Joe.